Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing really well. Been a really productive morning so far today. I've been able to list up those 10 pairs of shoes that I found at the flea market on Sunday. Put a video out about it. Nice to get those finally listed. The other one as well is we're gonna go and do three things today. The first is to grab the overnight sales and there were 12 that came through, some awesome results. I'm gonna take you through all of those. Then we're gonna jump in the van and go and do some thrifting to hopefully find some really great items to list up onto eBay tomorrow. And then the third one, the one that I really want you guys to hang around for today is the eBay winning mindset. Something that I've adopted right from the very beginning of my eBay business based on some second nature past experience of working in sales based environments. So if you're a beginner reseller, intermediate seller, even if you're an advanced reseller, this information is going to be pretty crucial for your success moving forward as an eBay seller. So hopefully you can get some value out of it. Remember to smash the like button, consider subscribing if you want to learn how to sell on eBay. Let's dive into the first thing that we do, grab those overnight sales. Okay, so the first sale were these Vans Zebra Print canvas shoes. These are a women's US size seven. They've sold internationally to somebody in the USA and they've ended up selling for $72. So $42 for the shoe, $30 for international postage. I'm gonna put the butcher's paper and the bubble wrap around these to ship them off, um, which I've shown you guys in the past on previous videos as to how I do those sort of items, the bigger box type items. Um, so they should get across there fine. It'll be a $24 cost after the Australia Post My Business Plan discount. So in effect, these shoes have sold for $48, which isn't too bad. I would have probably liked to get a few more dollars because they are brand new, but still, I've got so many shoes, I'm just happy to move them. Hopefully you guys watched my flea market video on Sunday. You would have seen me pick up this Brisbane Broncos 1990s vintage jumper. This is just an incredible grab. I paid $7.50 for it in the flea market literally two days ago, and it's already gone ahead and sold on eBay for $95. So an incredibly fast sales cycle. I did want to get hundred bucks for it. Got pretty close with the best offer. I'm doing express post on it as well. So it's going to be about an $85 sale price, and I only paid the $7.50. So... Just an unbelievable flip. Very, very stoked to have found it. If you find anything like this moving forward, guys, definitely pick it up. We've got a Queensland Reds Rugby Union uh, jumper here as well. This is a Cougar size extra large. It's a genuine jumper. There is a little bit of wear on this. Uh, you can tell that it has been worn a few times. So I didn't price it too heavily. Uh, I did get a $30 sale price on it. So a pretty quick sale cycle. I didn't have it up for too long. It was more the fact that I put it at a fairly fair price that was able to get it done so quickly. But um, yeah, look, $22 after postage, a $7.50 cost to send it off, and I would have only paid about five bucks for it. So let's call it a $12 to $15 profit. I'll look for the racing gear as well. So this one was a good quick mover, Double XL Holden Racing Team uh, racing shirt. So there are a couple of marks on this one, as you can see there, but overall, I was still pretty happy with the sale price of $35 for this one. The Holden Racing Gear, anything sort of Formula One or V8 supercars does pretty well for me. So I'm always picking this sort of thing up. 35 bucks, bought it for a few dollars in the thrift, made myself about a 15 to $20 profit. All right, so I've just finished dealing with a guy out of the UK. He was interested in three of my jerseys in store. The first one was this Canterbury Bulldogs 4XL Rugby League jersey. The next one, a Brisbane Broncos Rugby League jersey with a 25-year anniversary number on it. And then also to a uh, Melbourne Rebels Rugby Union jersey, size large, brand new with tags. So the issue was around postage. He inquired and said, what can you do for a postage rate? Because they were going to be $90.00 if they were all done individually. So I said, look, 30 bucks, because I know anywhere between 500 grams to one kilo to the UK is gonna cost about $30. So he was happy with that. I ended up getting the full asking price for these three jerseys. Two of them sold for $35 and the Kennedy Bulldogs sold for $48. So total cost uh, or sale price, $118. Shipping cost, 30 bucks. So $148 It's the reason why I pick up jerseys when I'm in the thrift. They do go on to sell really well and there are a lot of people out there looking to purchase them. So moving forward, while I'm doing my clothing items, I'm probably just going to stick to doing sporting gear because it just seems to do so well for me. Have a look at all these DVDs. Luckily, they are still selling for me, guys. This is the collection that sold overnight. The best of the bunch was probably these Yu-Gi-Oh uh, VHS tapes. So I've had these for a little while now, not too long. The sales cycle was okay. Uh, it's a bit of a mixed bundle. As you can see, we've got volume nine, volume eight, there's a volume 1.1. So there's only six VHS tapes, but they ended up selling as a bundled lot. I got a $40 sale price on those ones. So I was pretty happy to just get them off. That was a best offer as well. I had that priced up for 50. 
Um, then I've got these DVDs as well, Life on Mars, $29.50. If you can find that DVD, that always goes on to sell, the complete series, Life on Mars. Also found this one, um, Scooby-Doo, brand new. Um, that one sold for $17. God Rocks, I'd never heard of this one, but the, uh, the case looked pretty funky when I was in the thrift, so I bought it. Um, $17 there, and then $10 bucks for Children of the Corn as well, Stephen King. So $10, that's the lowest sale price I'll do for any of these DVDs that are in here. They're all listed up. Um, so to get that one done at a $5.50 plus $4.50 tracked postage, not too bad. And then some pretty good results there as well. So DVDs, VHS, they are still selling for me pretty regularly. And the last two items I have right here as well, a couple of clothing items. These Oakley casual board shorts or casual shorts uh, are 34 waist. They sold for $27.00. And 95 cents. And I wanted to get a $20 sale price for them. So I'm kind of happy with the $27.95 result. That was not on best offer. That was the full asking price. The other one as well, brand new with tags, Wrangler jeans. This one was sold on a best offer. Look, it sold for $35. They're the R47s, um, 32 waist, 34 length. I think I had them up for 45 bucks. I took a very low best offer of $35 for these. Probably could have held out for full price. But to be honest, I bought them for $2.00. Sold them for 35. There was a bit of profit in there. I'm just happy to get sales at the end of the day. So I took a really quick best offer on that one as well. Wrangler, just a great brand of jeans. They always go on to sell. So that is what is selling at the moment on eBay, guys. It's been a pretty good 24 hours. A lot of the money coming out of these sporting jerseys. Definitely a category for you guys to be looking out for there. A total volume of 12 sales for $556. I've been able to profit basically $280 off all of these items in just one single day. So it has been a great stretch. Uh, listing consistently is what is getting me these numbers, guys, and buying good quality items. A lot of them, as you would have seen here, are brand new with tags, and a lot of them as well are best offers. Make sure you're aware, if you're not putting your best offers on, you definitely should be, because this is where all my numbers are coming from. And that is how you make a protein shake with one hand. Don't say I don't teach you anything, guys. A lovely viewer of the channel by the name of Marilyn uh, sent me a message saying, Matt, how do you combine postage on eBay for multiple orders? And uh, I figured that was really timely to have a chat about that now, given the fact that we've just done that UK sale for those three jerseys. I'll put a bit of a screen grab up for you here to have a bit of a look at, but a very simple process. You're just going into your orders page, those without payment, and clicking on the items that you want to combine a invoice for. From there, you can manipulate the postage cost and the method of how you wanna ship the item as well. So it's actually a very easy process to just confirm from there and send it off to the buyer. And it's a very easy process for the buyer to then go ahead and make payment. So. Hopefully that really quick explanation and that I guess showing you that step-by-step -step process with a little screen grab can help you out there if you are making multiple sales to the single buyer that wants to do a combined postage amount. So very easy, hope that one helps. Hey guys, voiceover Matt here. I've jumped into the first thrift store and I've been able to find this 2007 Manly Sea Eagles Grand Final t-shirt. It's 2XL, it's $3. I've just spoken to you about how good it is to sell sporting gear. So I'm telling you right now, there's gonna be some profit there. The shoe section has absolutely smacked for us here. These Adidas shoes, a $3 price tag. You can't be saying no to these guys. They were in excellent condition. Mizuno, an awesome brand of running shoes. I sell this one quite a bit, so to find it, was an absolute thrill for me this morning. Just a $4 price tag, if you don't mind. Uh, and then I also found these as well. Now, I've never heard of this brand. I think it was Ovidian from the looks of that. I think it's a skateboarding shoe as well. And it was an $8 price tag. I've just taken it really just as a bit of a stab in the dark. No idea on the comps on eBay for it, but uh, I figured I'd just give it a go. Also found Fireman Sam, a bit of my childhood here, guys. There's unfortunately no money to be made in this, but I just had to put it into the video. I used to love watching this TV show. Let me know in the comments if you guys ever watched it. A question that I get asked quite a bit on this channel as well is how long do you spend in the, in the thrift? And my answer to that would be that it varies based on experience. So when I was first starting out, I'd be spending so much time in there working out brands, doing my comp searches to try and work out what certain items are worth. And that knowledge then just suddenly gets stored over time and, and my time in each thrift 
becomes less and less because I know what I'm looking for. So right now, today, that last op shop we were just in, I was in there for at most 10 minutes. I did my scan through all the sections that I would normally sell in and, uh, and then got out of there with those four items that you would have seen. Um, back maybe six to 12 months ago when I was first starting out, I'd probably spend about 20 to 30 minutes in there. So it all comes down to your experience. Um, my advice to you would be to make sure that you're thoroughly checking areas that you wanna sell by doing your comp searches in store and only buying items you know are gonna go on to sell on eBay rather than just having a guess because having a guess will generally get you items that don't go on to sell in a very quick space of time and they probably don't make you too much money unless you can jag one out of the blue. So. That, that would be my answer to that question. Um, spend as much time as you need. There's no rush with this, but for me now, it's generally about 10 minutes. Time to have a look in the second thrift store and I've been able to find this really nice women's jumper. This is a size large, LA Dreaming, Sunset Boulevard. Tell me right now, any girls watching this, what do you think of this? Because I really like the look of it and I do think it'll go on to sell well. Not sure what brand it is. I just like the print and the color and the pattern and sometimes that's all you need to go by. So for $7, I have picked this one up and I'm happy to give it to you guys on a very discounted rate if any of you viewers would like to grab it. I've also found this as well, uh, Burberry. First time I've found Burberry in the thrift and to be honest guys, I was clueless as to whether or not it was genuine. Have a look at these price tags um, and have a look at the actual Burberry tag London, you can see there. And let me know what your thoughts are as to whether or not it's genuine. That's the inner tag that was on it. Looked very Balinese to me if, uh, if I can say so myself. Um, so I wasn't actually too sure if these were genuine. There were two of them. Here's the other one. Also had a different tag uh, compared to the first one. So that one kind of really threw me off. We're talking $12 and $15 uh, for these two polo shirts. And because I was simply clueless, I didn't want to run the risk. So I have actually left those behind. Let me know if they were genuine. Also found this as well, Best Rogers Ivy League. This is just, a, again, a bit similar to the LA Dreaming jumper. I just like the look of it. Pink color, only five bucks, size large. Just a really cool women's jumper, I thought. Um, let me know in the comments below if you would have picked that one up for five bucks. Um, continued on, I found some really good jeans as well. These are just the Wranglers, um, the Wrangler Stomper. I've sold these a number of times and it was only a $5 price tag, so I was very happy to pick that one up. Should be about a $40 sale price when the job gets done on eBay. And then I found a brand that I've, I've known for quite some time, but I don't actually come across it too much in the thrift, and the brand is Elwood. Never actually sold it on eBay before. There was an $8 price tag, heavily embroidered pair of shorts. These are a 36 waist, and I was actually pretty happy to see them. So we'll see how they go on eBay. All right, guys, I've just got back home. I have all of my items right there that I'm going to list up this afternoon. Um, it's been a pretty good day so far. A few sales, some great items. Um, I do have a question from a person on my uh, eBay store. Now, I don't typically answer questions from my eBay store. It's always done through my Instagram, at the Aussie Flipper, if you have a question you want answered. But this question was so good that I couldn't help but answer it. And I also wanted to put it into the video to hopefully provide some value for you guys out there. Now, I'll go through the question. Um, the question came through a couple of days ago. It was from Urban City Cells, and they say, I was hoping to ask you a question about your listings. None of them are on auction. They're all buy it now and best offer. Is that a choice when you set it up from the jump or is it just simply easier to do? Another favorite seller of mine in the USA is doing similar. Trying to wrap my head around turning off auctions on items and just going with buy it now moving forward. Now this really got me thinking back to the very beginning when I first set up my eBay store. I literally didn't even think but then I realized that people out there might not have had the prior experience that I've had working in a sales environment. My, my past background, for those of you who don't know, is working for four different football clubs, majority of them in the AFL, where I had a B2B, B2C mindset. So I was always working with an end consumer. I always had a customer first mindset. And that is no different when you come to selling on eBay. If you're setting things up in your store, having that mindset of what is best for the customer, you'll go ahead and do a really good job of getting a heap of sales. I'll put up my answer to that question here for you to have a look at. I said, personally, I try to think like a buyer, not a seller when it comes to setting up my store. A buyer always wants something right away, so I'm gonna give them a buy it now option. A buyer would prefer to have free postage, so I'm gonna set up a free postage option. A buyer also wants to get a better price, so I'm gonna set up best offer. Those three aspects are a huge winning formula to getting sales on eBay. You're thinking from a customer first mindset. You're not doing it to the detriment of yourself though, which is what I think a lot of people with those three things can sometimes think. 
Some scenarios here from a customer first approach with my eBay winning formula. When it comes to buy it now, I know that I'm still gonna get the price that I want. Rather than going with an auction and hoping that it balloons up to an elevated price point, you know that putting it up at a buy it now is gonna be the price that you want and it also serves the person buying the item because they know that they can get the item right now. So I'm always gonna do buy it now for every single one. Free postage. Now the cost is always bundled into the price, which a lot of people really don't seem to understand. I have a free postage model, but I'm never, dis I'm never discounting myself the cost of the actual postage. So an example of that would be the Oakley shorts, literally that I just sold earlier on today. It was a $27.95 buy it now. That was because I wanted to get the shorts sold for $20, plus $7.95 worth of postage. So I market the item up for $27.95, but it's a win-win. Psychologically, the buyer gets the item for a price of free postage, and I get the price of $20 that I initially wanted. So I'm always doing free postage for every single one of my items for that mindset. The other one as well is best offer. Now, when I set up best offer, a perfect example of this is I'll always market an item that I wanna sell for 30 bucks for $32.50 as an example. From there, when somebody watches the item, I can then go with a $30 best offer. Now, the person buying the item will think that they've got a really good deal because they've saved 5% by just simply asking the question and I'm still selling the item for what I wanted to sell initially. So. I really do think that Best Offer, like you would have seen today with a lot of the items that I've sold, they do sell on Best Offer, so you need to be giving that element. The buyer always wants a discounted price, no matter what they're buying, no matter when they're buying it, no matter where they're buying it. So those three elements are huge to winning on eBay, and it, it, it does just simply come back to the start, when you're very beginning. I've never manipulated this, this is always the way I've run my show, and it does go on to do pretty well for me. And it comes back to the fact that I'm having a buyer mindset not a seller's mindset. So hopefully that information is uh, of use to you guys. Uh, let me know in the comments below, are you doing these three elements? Are you doing buy it now, free postage and best offer? I really do think that you should and you probably don't even realize that if you are, but you are certainly serving that buyer's mindset, which always wins on eBay. So the 30% crew that are still here watching now, thanks for being here guys. I truly do appreciate all of you clicking on this video and especially you guys for sticking around to the very end. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Some useful information there regarding that eBay winning mindset, some thrifting, some sales, that is eBay 101. So thank you very much. Appreciate you being here. Trip to the thrift on Thursday. I'll leave you with a video that I really enjoyed making, which was a recent trip to the thrift uh, where the coronavirus almost hit us. But uh, I'll see you in the next video guys. We'll see you soon.